So number one on our list, gluten can cause tonsil stones, which can make your breath quite horrendous. Now, if you don't know what tonsil stones are, so we look at this model or this diagram, in the back of the tonsils, you can get pockets of pus that form and, and basically pack into the tonsils. This stuff smells pretty foul, right? And so it can cause really, really bad breath, but this is a hallmark. So if you, this is one of the earlier symptoms of gluten exposure. So if you didn't know you were gluten sensitive and you struggle with these tonsil stones, you go to your dentist and your dentist has to pick them out of your tonsils, you might consider taking our gluten-free quiz. Um, and you can check that out. We'll throw a link in for you, but that might give you some better insight as to whether or not going gluten-free might help with that problem. Let's go into number two. So we get stink on both ends. Bad breath coming out of the mouth with tonsil stones and foul gas. Gluten can definitely do that. For many people, gluten damages and destroys the intestinal lining, leading to hyperinflammation in the gut that can come out and manifest as very, very foul gas. So if you struggle with bad gas and you think you're eating healthy and you're not sure why, this is definitely one of those hallmark symptoms, early detection again of gluten exposure. Now, another one that we very commonly see is dizziness and loss of balance. So this can be very, very scary. You, you know, some people, they're trying to walk. They, they actually lose their ability to drive. They get so much anxiety over a vertigo spell or a vertigo imbalance spell um, that they lose their mobility. They lose their ability to walk. Now, this is, this is something that happens as a result of gluten-induced neurological damage. So as you can see here, um, this coming out of the journal Neurologic uh, in psychiatric manifestations of celiac disease and gluten sensitivity coming out of the Journal of the Psychiatric Quarterly, the best characterized neurological complication related to gluten sensitivity, uh, or gluten sensitivity is ataxia, also sometimes referred to as gluten ataxia. Folks, this is vertigo. This is loss of balance. It's because gluten can damage your brain. The types of antibodies that gluten can make your body produce, can attack areas of your brain. And this includes your upper, your lower limb ataxia. So you can, you can have imbalance in your brain. You can also become clumsy in your upper and lower extremities. So if you're finding yourself becoming more and more clumsy, it's maybe not age, but gait ataxia, which is dizziness and loss of balance and dysarthria. Um, and so you see down here a study done by Marios Hadjivasilou, who's one of the leading researchers in the field of gluten-induced nerve issues. He measured the response of patients with gluten ataxia and neuropathy to the administration of a gluten-free diet. And after one year on a gluten-free diet, the patients experienced significant relief of their ataxic symptoms on all tests. So when we say gluten can cause ataxia, if you struggle with loss of balance, if you struggle with vertigo, and even you know going in a little bit deeper, because a lot of times vertigo, Meniere's disease, if you've heard that term, um, go hand in hand. So if you've got those types of problems, you definitely want to consider gluten sensitivity as a potential trigger for that issue. Scary to have happen. If you've ever lost your balance and couldn't stand up and walk straight, very, very scary. Now, gluten can also maim and disfigure, and it does this by damaging your joints through the triggering of autoimmune arthritis. And so worst case scenarios, you look at some advanced, I'll show you an advanced kind of picture of somebody's hand with rheumatoid arthritis. You can see here the way that that finger is contorted and misshaped, but it comes up and it swans. It's called swan necking when the fingers do that. This person is not contorting their hand, they are actually, that is the way that it's formed. And it has to do with the uh, corrosive damage that gluten can induce inside of the joints. It causes malformation. It can cause deviation of the wrist. It can make it very, very hard. And when I say maim, because if this advances far enough, it makes it hard for you to drive. It makes it hard for you to grip, hold your keys, pull your wallet out of your pocket, take a, a lid off of a jar, like all of these things that we take for granted with our strong grip strength can be maimed very, very easily if gluten goes out of control for too long a period of time. Now, it can take decades for this kind of damage to occur, but it doesn't have to. In some cases, I've seen 
uh, where people develop really rapid onset of, ner- of uh, joint damage in, in their joints for not going gluten-free, for not following through with their gluten-free diets to the point where they had permanent arthritic damage. So by the time it gets this bad, you're not going to reverse that. So the best thing that you can do is to prevent it. So uh, you guys that are familiar with the show, I wrote a book called No Grain, No Pain. We talked all about gluten arthritis and other forms of painful autoimmune conditions. So make sure you, if you haven't already read that and check that out, check it out, especially if you struggle with rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, next on the list, gluten can cause lymphoma. Now, lymphoma is a type of cancer, and it is absolutely dangerous. It can kill you, and that's why this one is uh, high up on our list of the scariest things about gluten, because your risk of developing different types of lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, enteropathic lymphomas, these things, these are dangerous diseases, again, they can actually kill you, uh, but gluten can enhance or contribute to these problems. As you can see here, uh, I actually just got back last night at 2 in the morning, actually. I just got back from Nashville, Tennessee. I was speaking uh, at The Truth About Cancer, and we talked about gluten and cancers. And so what you're looking at here is a research study Um, on the malignancy and celiac disease and the effects of a gluten-free diet. And I think it's important for you to see here, there are a number of different cancers that are increased as a result of the consumption of gluten. So it's not just lymphoma as a cancer, but we do have lymphoma. We also have cancer of the mouth, the pharynx. Okay. We also have cancer of the esophagus, cancer of the intestine, the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, and so you can see here, here's the good news though. A significant decreasing trend in the excess morbidity rate over increasing use of a gluten-free diet was found, meaning what these researchers found is that there was a protective role of a gluten-free diet in morbidity and death rates of people with these cancers. So again, if you um, have been diagnosed with these types of cancers, you don't know whether going gluten-free is the right move for you, I would highly encourage you to look more into doing either genetic testing for gluten sensitivity to determine if it's a problem or take our quiz. Take our quiz if it's positive. Going gluten-free won't hurt you. That is one thing that is absolutely true. Going on a gluten-free diet will not hurt you, but if it can save you, if it can help you, absolutely worth it. Now, another thing that you want to be careful of, gluten can lurk and hide in medicine and in supplements. So you've got to be aware, if you are on a gluten-free diet, this is the place we see people probably get gluten the most, right? Where they say, I don't know why I still feel sick. I'm following the diet. I'm doing so well. Gluten can be found in a number of different medications. And what's key here to understand, especially if you're taking any kind of prescription drug, is you want to look at the inactive ingredients. So a lot of times, you know, whatever the drug is, let's say you're taking thyroid medication and the active ingredient is going to be thyroxin, but you want to look for the inactive ingredients. This is another section on the label. So when you go to the pharmacy to pick up your your medicine, they usually will have an insert in the in the medication that tells you what the ingredients are. There's a section that says inactive ingredients and this is where you want to look for that hidden lurking gluten that can jump out and scare you, right? So inactive ingredients, and we see this a lot with um, corn, we'll sometimes see starch, modified starch is a common filler, rice starch is a common filler, there's another term maltodextrin, which is a sugar that can be derived from grains, it's not always, it can be derived from tapioca and potato, which are both gluten free, but it can also be derived from wheat in corn and other grains. So these are, again, inactive ingredients that you want to watch out for because they really can put a damper on your health. In addition, um, we see with supplements, one of the most common is corn-based ingredients. It's very, very common. For example, a lot of the products that contain um, citric acid, many of the versions of citric acid are derived from genetically modified corn. So not all, but many are. And so you have to watch out for that. Rice powder is one of the most common fillers today used in supplements. And I see people all the time 
reacting to this one. So just be cautious and know to read the label, look at the ingredients and make sure you're not getting exposure. I, I was scary about this as I see some brands and some products and they're like designed, the products are for the gluten-free, like I've seen gluten-free digestive enzymes, right? In some brands and one of their top ingredients is rice powder. And I just have to, I get a little chuckle, but actually I get really scared too because I know there are a lot of people that are misinformed about rice. They don't understand that rice does contain a form of gluten and can create problems. And if you're just hearing that, if this is new to you, if you're new to the, to the Pick Dr. Osborne Brain Show, you definitely need to go check out Gluten-Free Society or check out my book from the library, read it, No Grain, No Pain, you get educated about the dangers of all forms of grain containing gluten, not just wheat, barley, and rye, as is so popularized. Okay, the last on our list. Gluten can murder you. Literally, gluten can kill you. Eating gluten can increase your risk of dying fourfold. And don't take my word for it. We're sure of this. This was published in the journal Gastroenterology. You can see here, Here's the conclusion during 45 years of follow-up, so 45 years following up, undiagnosed celiac disease, meaning you, did, you had a problem with gluten, but you didn't have a diagnosis, was associated with a nearly four-fold increased risk of death. This is serious business, folks. This is what I'm talking about. It can murder you. It can kill you. It's a slow poison. It's not a fast poison, and this is why so many people miss it. Now, here's the scary part. The prevalence of undiagnosed celiac disease and gluten sensitivity seems to have increased dramatically in the United States during the past 50 years. So what they're saying is not only will not knowing that you're gluten sensitive and eating gluten increase your risk by dying 400%, but the prevalence of doctors missing the diagnosis is increasing over the last 50 years. So it's a double whammy. Doctors are just not educated about gluten. They're not aware. If you don't have celiac disease where you're vomiting or you're having diarrhea and wasting away to nothing, they don't even consider celiac disease a possibility. They don't even consider gluten a possibility. Remember, there are over a hundred different forms of illness that have been linked to gluten because if you are sensitive to it, if you're reactive to it, it causes inflammation every time you eat it. Low levels of inflammation hammering you over 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, slowly stealing your life force from you and stealing your health, increasing your risk of an early death by 400%. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.